getting to the children of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, how did they come about? It's a question. Hawa, may peace be upon her, she gave birth 20 times. Each time there was a boy and a girl. Subhanallah. They were of different colors, different shapes and sizes in the sense that, you know, the looks were varying from one to the other and so on. And at that time, they had to be married. So how were they going to marry? They had a different law. They had a different Sharia. Adam alayhi salam, how did he become a prophet? That is also a very important question for us to answer. Initially, he was the father. When he had his children, he began to remind his children of what happened in Jannah and what happened with the devil. So automatically, he was a Nabi of Allah. He was, he was reminding them of the beginning and who Allah is and how we must worship Allah alone because he is the sole creator and how the devil cheated them and got them out of paradise. So they all knew directly from Adam alayhi salam that this is what happened and Adam alayhi salam was giving them da'wah. He was literally calling them towards goodness and keeping them on the right track. So as the children grew, one of the oldest children was known as Qabil in the English language Cain. And the one younger than him was known as Habil or Abel in the English language. We find some similarities in the previous revelations with what we also have in Islam. So what was the difference between these two? Listen very carefully. Cain was not so good looking and Abel was very handsome. Listen to this. And the sister of Cain was very good looking, but she was born in the same or from the same womb. So those two were what we call womb brothers and sisters from the same womb. And when it came to Abel, he was very good looking. But his sister was not as good looking. Look at how looks affected them from the very beginning. So Adam alayhi salam instructed the two when the time came and they Allah put naturally in them the inclination towards marriage and partnership and so on. So Adam alayhi salam says, you will marry the sister of this one. and This one will marry the sister of your meaning your sister. So Cain, his sister was very good looking. He looked at this girl he's supposed to marry and he says she's not that good looking and why must i give my sister to this guy why imagine the question i don't want to give my sister if we read the books of the historians ibn kathir rahimahullah has made mention of what i'm saying he says kabil or cain says i don't want my sister to go to him and i don't want to have his sister i'd rather have my own sister he's saying astaghfirullah but anyway that was what went through his mind. And as a result, it created a problem. Look at how marriage up to today creates problems between people. The hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, if a proposal comes to you from a person whose level of deen you are happy with and whose character you are happy with, then get them married. If you don't get them married, there will be great fitna and facade and corruption and lots of chaos on earth. Imagine, from the beginning this happened. So, Cain was worried about looks and he says, I'm not going to marry her. Now, as the turbulence continued, they went to their father. The father heard about it. He was upset. He tried to explain to them and he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah showed him a way out. What was the way out? Allah says, instruct the two of them. One was a shepherd and one was a farmer who had produce. Instruct the two of them to give out a charity. Instruct the two of them to give out a charity and Whoever's charity is accepted will be correct. Now what happened? This is made mention of the Quran. In the Quran, Allah says, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recite to them the story of the two sons of Adam with truth. When both of them gave their sacrifices and it was accepted from one and it was not accepted from the other. The question is, why was it not accepted? It is very interesting. We are going to draw a lesson from this. The one who was a shepherd was Abel. He came with a good animal and he put it on the mountain. Why did they have to put it on the mountain? There were no poor people at the time. There's no poor to give the charity to. So the plan at that time, what used to happen is they used to put the sacrifice on the mountain and then they would go away. When they come back, they would see the fire has eaten one or the other. When the fire has eaten your sacrifice, it means it was accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if the fire has not eaten it, it's not accepted, it's rejected. 
So this man came with a very good animal and put it there. And the other brother, Cain, the one who was fighting and arguing, he was a farmer. He had produce. He brought not mediocre produce, but that produce that was now almost rotten. And he put it there and he says, right, this is the sacrifice. And they went away. So one was accepted, one wasn't. It's very simple to know which one was accepted and why. Remember when we give out our zakah. Zakah is not a voluntary charity. Voluntary charity, you can give what you want. But at least try to give something which is reasonable. So for a voluntary charity, you can give secondhand clothes. You can give a little bit of leftover food and so on. No problem because it is going to be made use of by someone underprivileged. That is a voluntary charity. But when it comes to zakah, don't do that. You need to give that which is good. We are not saying the best. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa tells Mu'adh ibn Jabal, ittaqi karaima amwalihim. That ya Mu'adh, when you go to collect the zakat from the people, don't take the best, but don't take the worst either. Take that which is mediocre, the middle. So when we are giving, let's not give the stock that is expired and say that's my zakat, I'm going to deduct it from my zakat. How? It's expired. You rather give it as a voluntary charity. Give that which is good, Allah will accept it. You'll see the difference of it in your life. But when we've given the poor wealth, sometimes, you know, we take a look at the two and a half percent, a small percentage is zakah. Other churches, they're giving 10% of the salary. Go and find out. Ask people who are following other churches. Happily, they come and say, no, this is 12%, 10 and another two from me. And with us, it's only two and a half percent. And you find a man scrounging saying, you know what? Are you sure I've got to give zakat on this? No. Do I really have to? May Allah open our doors. It is from Allah. And wallahi, a charity has never decreased anybody's wealth. That is a hadith. Charity cannot decrease your wealth. How much are you going to use? How much are you going to spend? So when one charity was accepted, the other one wasn't, listen to the verse. He looked at his brother and says, I'm going to kill you. Now, why do you want to kill him when his was accepted and mine wasn't? Allahu Akbar. Now I want to kill him. For what? Again, this is shaitan's plan. Don't look at the root of the cause or the root cause. But go and just blame someone and lay the blame on him and start becoming violent. That's shaitan. So instead of looking at why it was rejected, he decided, right, I'm envious of this man. Firstly, he's good looking. Secondly, he's going to get a wife who's very good looking. Thirdly, his wealth is accepted. And he's a, he's a nice farmer. He's got all this, you know, uh, livestock and he's so happily living and so on. Why is it that I am not? He became envious of his own brother. Does this not happen in some homes? May Allah safeguard us. Where because of how good looking someone is, the others ignore them. Or sometimes the other way around, some parents ignore. And wallahi, we need to go home. Look, I'm not going to mince my words. We need to go home and ask ourselves. Are we guilty of this? Without knowing, subconsciously, I always believe people are good. Shaitan is bad. Do you know, sometimes shaitan makes a parent ignore a child and give more importance to the one who's better looking without realizing. Wallahi, sometimes shaitan makes a parent give more importance to the child who's more intelligent. Wallahi. And this is shaitan's plan. And the other child cannot talk. They are depressed. They cannot open up to anyone. I have had so many emails from people who have this problem. And they can't make mention of anything. And I say, should I talk to your parent? They say, no ways. But they feel so inferior. For what? Why should we do this? I would like to believe shaitan is bad. People are good. We need to try and make sure we don't fall into the trap of shaitan. So let shaitan not do the same thing that he did with the children of Adam, where because of beauty, there was big chaos and disaster. Either way, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So we are talking here, both sides of the coin. So he says, the brother gave an answer. Allah is going to accept the charity of the person who is conscious of Allah. Allah will accept the charity of the one who's conscious of Allah. If you are going to stretch your hand to kill me, I'm not going to stretch my hand to fight you or to kill you back or to do anything to you because I fear Allah. I fear our creator who has created entire creation and he is the Lord of the worlds. This was the answer of the brother. But what happened? This brother was adamant and shaitan had taught him how to kill. Imagine, how would someone have known how to kill? You've got to stop this person from breathing. How? Shaitan taught him how to murder. So 
he hit his brother with something very hard, either a rock or something very hard, and he killed him. As soon as he killed his brother, he sat there looking at his brother. And he started regretting. He started regretting. Why did he start regretting? That is shaitan. As soon as you do something bad and you've executed it, he goes away. Once the brother was killed, he looks at his brother. And now he went away. He went to Adam alayhi salam and he carried on with the day. And Adam alayhi salam asks him, where's your brother? He says, my brother, I'm not responsible for him. Why do I have to know where he is and what's happening? Immediately Adam alayhi salam knew that there's something wrong. This child is hiding something from him. There is something wrong. Now, later on in the evening, he went back to the body and he's looking at it. And the following morning, he's looking at this body again. And now it started releasing a stench. It started releasing a stench. And he was remorseful because of his regret. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mercy on him by sending him a lesson through two crows. Allah says in the Quran, he regretted when he saw these crows come and the one was digging in order to bury the other and it dug and put the other into the ground and covered it. So he says, can't I be like this crow? Let me do this. So he dug a hole also and he buried his brother and so on. And he was very, very remorseful. And thereafter it is reported that he could not really stay with Adam alayhi salatu was salam and then with all the regret that he had. And so he went away. He went quite far. In fact, one narration says he carried the body on his back and he went quite far and then he buried it at a bit of a distance.